owning an old hot rod classic or muscle car, it's great fun. What's not great fun is filling it up with gas every day. What's even less fun is having a gauge that reads full when you know you've been to a few cruises and it must be near empty. Hello YouTubes. Today I'm going to swap out my cheap Chinese fuel sender and gauge for another cheap Chinese sender and gauge. But this time I'm going for something a little bit different from what I've currently got in the tank. At the moment I've got your standard wire and float setup that goes up and down like that, a bit like you find in a toilet system. And I think the problem is that I've got quite a, a wide shallow tank, similar to what you might find in a boat. So, picked up a marine sender unit. Now this is actually quite specifically uh, lengthed. I had to measure my tank first. My tank is around about seven inches top to bottom. So I got one just under seven inches. Obviously, if you get one at eight inches, it's going to bottom out at the bottom of the tank and then not fasten. So these do come with lots of different length options. And that just feels like it's it's just a lot freer than the the arm thing with the little resistance thing. Kind of like what you would find in a slot car trigger. You know, you can feel it grinding as you press the trigger. That's what the current sender unit's like. This is a lot more free moving. So I'll show you what else we get in this little kit. So we have the sender unit itself, which really feels solid. I really like this. It's like, it's decent thickness. All feels very rigid. This section here, it's all really nicely put together. The other side we've got, obviously you've got your signal wire and your ground wire. And these are pre-tinned for soldering, which is really nice. It's not just bare wires. That's quite impressive. You also have, oh, I'm hoping that this is a standard five nut bolt setup. It doesn't come with a rubber seal, so I'm hoping that it's all the same so that I can just use the existing seal. Otherwise, I'll need to make one, but we'll find out when we get into our trunk. Comes with its new gauge, which on its own, it actually looks really nice, similar to what I've got, but it does light up different colors with this little button. Oh, it's quite hard to click, but you can it's LED, so you can change it between colors. I'll probably set it to red. <laughs> I always need to know how much fuel I've got. It's got a little plug rather than just bare wires coming out of it. So then you have the connectors for all your internal stuff. So you've got your lights, you've got your signal wire. I'm guessing that the blue one will be your signal wire. You're going to have two positives, one for reading the gauge or making the gauge work and one for lighting it up and then black will be the ground again. Comes with a nice little bag of connectors. I'm hoping that these are the type that you crimp and then use a, a heat gun and it shrinks, but it's possible that they just... No, I think... I hope, I hope that these will shrink to fit, but we'll find out soon. And obviously your standard Chinese instructions. They're always fun to read. Okay, let me show you what's inside the trunk. I kind of built this car with accessibility in mind so I do have a removable panel that can get access to the top of the tank unlike the Dodge Ram but I'm not going to talk about that obviously the first thing we're going to do is disconnect the battery get that out and then this semi rusty panel don't worry about that it's just surface rust it's because I don't have gutters around the trunk lid so all the water just gets in there I'll fix that one day anyway We've got some 10 mil bolts all the way around here. Take that panel out and I can get into the tank. We now have access to my tank. Looks a bit grubby around there. I'll give that a clean before I take this out. So that's some signal wire heading towards the gauge. That's actually my ground wire. So what obviously you can see about rust, that was purely from the nut because it was steel and everything else was aluminum. So I replaced that and 
I'll probably just split that and take a feed from there to the ground wire for the new gauge. Right, let me clean that up and see if the new one fits. So this is what I was talking about with the resistance, it's in here, the little, you can hear it grinding and it actually clicks about, actually clicks about there, about halfway, so I think this is defunct, defunct, is that a word? I think it's a word, anyway let's see if the new one's going to fit, easiest way to figure out if it's going to fit is to put the, the rubber seal over and if the if the holes line up then it should work just fine I'm not sure if these holes are equidistant looks pretty close so let's plug this in and orientation doesn't matter obviously because it goes up and down, not sideways. But, as I say, as long as the holes are not offset, then it should line up quite nicely. Yeah, we're good there. Not quite sure where to put this wire. Probably best going that way, since that's where all the wiring's heading, right? Okay, let me screw these all together. And it doesn't bottom out, by the way, just making sure there. Perfect. Right, as I say, let me screw this together and then we'll get started in the wiring. New gauge is installed and just for the record, these holes are not equidistant. They do have to line up a specific way. And luckily for me, it points straight that way, which is the direction I wanted. Okay, on to the wiring. And something interesting, I did mention that Chinese instructions were always uh, comical. Check this out. This is my wiring diagram. Number one, red. Number one, ignition, then positive over the battery. Makes sense. Number two, which goes from the gauge to the signal, is black. That makes sense. Not. Number three, orange, which is this one, which is going to go to the switch on your lights and then to positive. So the the backlight only comes on with the lights. Again, that makes sense. And blue is ground. Comes from the gauge, goes to the, the ground or battery negative, which is fine, except the sender unit wiring is blue and brown, unless they think that's orange. So the blue is not the signal wire. The blue is the ground. And presumably this is the signal wire. That makes sense. Not. Anyway, I'll hook it all together best I can. Then I'll get started on the gauge. I'm not going to put the cover on at the moment. I want to make sure it all works first before I close the hatch. I'm also going to add an extra earth strap from the tank to the frame. Right, let's get this gauge installed. Unfortunately, this current gauge does not have this sort of connection at the back. It's independently or individually wired, so I need to reach around there, pull out the, the correct wires, make sure I don't pull them all out of everything else, and then I can disconnect it and the gauge will come out this way. So I'll see you in a second. This is actually not a bad gauge. I mean, it doesn't work, but it's it's got nice little instructions on the back. It's irrelevant now because I'm not using it anymore. But now I have to figure out 
all these wires that are just connected, make sure they're going to go to the right places. And I'll tell you what else I'm going to do. Before I commit, I'm going to wire up a, a small fuse coming from the positive of the new gauge to the sender unit signal wire because I'm not completely convinced that blue should be ground when there's a brown there. So as I say, I'll put a very low resistance fuse in line so that I don't send power directly to the frame and blow my new gauge. My gauge plug wiring going to ignition positive, lights positive, ground and that's my little online inline fuse. It's just a three amp fuse for the signal wire. As I say, if that works fine, I'll just put a proper connection between these two. But if that blows, obviously the ground and the signal are wrong in the trunk. Not my fault. Bad instructions. What a surprise. Let me hook this up, see if anything works. My wiring is now all connected, albeit temporarily. My little three amp inline fuse. Just got to connect this to the gauge. The gauge plug can only go in one way. There's a couple of ridges at this side here and corresponds to the ridges or anti-ridges. I don't know what they're called, grooves. It should go in there. It's a bit of a tight fit. There we go. I'm not going to put this clip on at the moment because that looks like a bear to get off. So now we're going to switch the ignition on. I'll just put it on to accessory. Everything should work on accessory. And hope that this fuse does not pop. Let us find out. We are showing empty and it's not empty. Now, the good thing is there is a variation, a variable uh, resistance option on this and there's instructions for how to set that up. Basically you hold this button at the back for three seconds and it goes into a sort of programming mode. Let me figure that out and we'll try and get this back. It should be about half full. Just for last, I'll turn it over to ignition on to see if there's any difference. No difference. Okay, so at least this isn't popping, so I'm fairly happy that these the wires in the trunk are the right way around. So let me go and read the instructions on how to program this resistance back shortly. My lovely instructions. So apparently the default value is empty. And I'm looking for half full-ish. So what you do is you hold on, sorry, hold in this little button for three seconds. It will start flickering and then you press it again depending on where you want it to set it. So I'm thinking that once it starts flickering, because I want it halfway, I'll click it twice once it starts flickering. I'll give that a shot. Ignition on. Press and hold for three seconds. I'll press it once which takes it to empty, press it twice, does nothing, press it again, does nothing, hmm, strange, let me try that again, I'll hold it in for three seconds, oh my god, you've got to press really hard, well this isn't working, maybe I need to put the back light on, let me try it with the lights on, because all I'm doing here is changing the colour of the back light, which is pretty cool, but you know, that's what orangey, purple, oh that's nice, there's a pink, off, green, red, I wonder if it just does white, ah there's white, that's nice, right, I'm going to try again, hold it in for three seconds, press it once, goes to fill, press it again, does nothing, press it again, goes to empty, press it again, goes to a quarter, ah there we go, that's where I want it to be reading. I'm not sure why it's gone up to full. This is very strange. Right, let me switch off the ignition and see if it now resets to half. 
No. Oh, oh, wait, 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 stop. Oh. I'm going to keep trying this till I get it right. Hold on for three seconds. Clickers. See, it goes to half there. Press it once. Press it again. Press it again. And again. I'm going to stop it here because the last time I stopped at half, it went up to full. Ah. Oh. Users could select the input resistance as down below operations if you have fuel slash water slash sewage level gauge. Hold the mode button for three seconds to enter the setting mode, backlight flickering for a while. The needle point at the E position and you could select the corresponding parameter via pressing the button as down below form. Right, before this drives me completely insane, I'm going to take the sender back out, put a stick down into the tank and see how much fuel I've got. It's a seven inch tank, halfway would be about three and a half inches, bearing in mind the car is on a, a slight slope. Shouldn't make that much of a difference. Around about halfway is what I'm expecting, so let me whip that out, see what we've got. Why use a stick when I've got a perfectly good ruler? Right in your pot. It's actually seven and a half inches we've got. The mark is two and a half inches, so we are about a third full. Yeah, a third full, slight slope. So maybe between a third and a, a half that I've got. Oh boy. Let's play with the gauge again. You know, even if I can get it to read a quarter, I would be happy with that. Better to show more, better to show less than it actually has than, well, than anything else at the moment, to be honest. Okay, so it's currently going to fill, which it's obviously not. Press and hold. Goes to half, press it once, goes to three quarters, press it again, goes to fill. Press it again, goes to empty. Press it there, goes to quarter, leave it alone, and it goes back up to full. What am I doing wrong? I'll try once more with the lights on, like that makes a difference. And I'll turn the ignition off when it gets to where I want it. Ignition off. Give it a minute. I don't think it's doing anything magical in there, like calibrating. I think it's just kidding me on. Ignition on. And apparently it's full, empty, and full. Junk! I'm not giving up quite yet. I've installed the gauge properly. Get rid of that fuse in case that was doing something weird. I'm going to install the battery properly. Put the floor back on and go for a drive and see if it just needs a wee bit of mobile calibration or some nonsense. If it even goes up a bit, I really don't mind if it's showing almost empty at a quarter. As I say, that's better than showing more than I've got. Uh, I'll see you in the car. Watch me. 
and it's gone back down to nearly empty again. tank of gas and I know it's full because it's spurted all over my nice paint work eh. let's see if that makes a difference I've got a guy beside me doesn't know what to do please move
Right, I'm going to give this little gauge the benefit of the doubt for now. It went right up to full, stayed at full, didn't bounce up and down. And I think it's possibly because this type of float does not like being almost empty or like a quarter, between a quarter and empty. It will just show empty, which is fine. As I say, I'd rather it showed more than I've actually got or less than I've actually got. Yeah, less. You get the feeling, you get the, you get the picture. Right, before I go, special thanks to Ryan, my new Patreon member. Without all my Patreon guys, I couldn't afford garbage Chinese junk like this. Need more Patreon subscribers to get quality stuff. But hey, thanks a lot anyway. If you want to know what that's about, link in the description. Right, I suppose I better go and use some petroleum and see if the gauge works. Any excuse for a drive. See you later.